next in 11 News, Brian Sachs with answers to your mortgage questions. If you have a question, go ahead and call us at 410-481-8844. Stay with us. Brian is up next. And welcome back. Joining us now is Brian Sachs to answer your mortgage question. Thanks for joining us again, Brian. Thank you. All right, before we get to, well, let's go right to the phones, and then if we have some time, I'll ask you some other questions. We've got Karen on the line. Good morning, Karen. What's your question for Brian? Hi. My husband and I had gotten approved um, to purchase a home for $305,000. I since left my job, so my husband can only get approved for the house. The house, we were originally going to include the closing costs into the loan, um, but the loan, the lender won't go as high as the closing costs. Now, the builder has agreed to pay the closing costs of $12,500, but he won't rewrite the loan. So isn't that going to end up costing us more money? If the loan was written at 305, then won't it cost us more if they write it at 317 versus 305? Uh, well, yes, of course, if you're borrowing more money, you will uh, be in a situation where you will be paying higher mortgage payments. The good news there is, though, f with rates being where they are right now, Karen, for every thousand extra you borrow, it's only going to cost you an extra six dollars a month on a 30-year loan. So that small $12,000 difference may not be that, that big a deal in terms of your monthly payment. Uh, having said that, you know, if your uh, builder is going to pay your closing costs, there are certain limitations that you need to check with your lender on to make sure that they do meet the uh, lender's program guidelines. All right. Larry, good morning. You have a question for Brian. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Brian, yeah, it's actually like a two-fold question. Okay. Um, I have a adjustable arm loan right now. We're in like our 13th year. I tried to get rid of my PMI, and they're telling me uh, that my PMI lasts a life alone. That's the first part of the question. I never heard of that before, but that's what they're telling me. Uh, the second part of my question is, I am on an adjustable arm. I'm way down like 4.7%. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to refinance, but everybody keeps telling me don't do it because you're just going to pay more money and why lock yourself in? Well, well there's two answers to your questions because you had two parts to it, Larry, so let me give it to you this way. Uh, the first part of your question is, I, I also have never heard of having a uh, mortgage insurance, which is an insurance that protects the lender for the life of the loan. I don't believe there is such a thing. Uh, I'm not aware of one. Secondarily, uh, how long are you going to be in the property? How long do you think you're going to remain there? Uh, probably another eight years anyway, until uh, I retire. I'm okay. Well, knowing that you're 13 years into a loan, even though it's at 4.7%, the wisdom in our industry right now is that rates have the potential to go up in the future. So when you refinance, uh, the lender will look at the value of the property versus how much you currently owe. And if you've been there 13 years, you probably have a lot of equity in the property. So my first, the first answer is I don't believe you'll need to have mortgage insurance when you refinance. Secondarily, knowing you're going to be there long term, it may be worthwhile for you to refinance and fix it because uh, right now rates are running in the 5% in the, the range. Uh, for a 15 or even a 30 year mortgage in the fives. So the answer to your question is refinance, get rid of your mortgage insurance. You may save enough money just getting rid of the mortgage insurance to make it worthwhile. All right, Beth, you have a question for Brian. Sure. Smart mortgage with no money down, are those really such smart mortgages? Uh, <laughs> well, the answer to the question is it's right for the right person as, as every mortgage scenario is. If it's right for you, there are programs where people have really excellent income, they have excellent credit, but they don't have enough money to buy a home. And if, if it's the difference between renting and owning, certainly I would look into a 100% or even a 103% loan where you can borrow your closing cost. It may not be right for everyone. It's an individual scenario. All right, Barbara, good morning. You have a question for Brian? Hello? Good morning. Hello. Hi, I have a question. Um, I have a, um, a balance of, uh, of, of my loan for 37000 Yes. And my interest rate is 7.125. Is it wise to try to get, get a different loan? Uh, again, the question is how long will you be keeping the home and the mortgage? Uh, probably for another 20 years. Another 20 years? Then, yes, I would say it may make sense for you to refinance. What you want to look at is how much will the cost of the refinance be versus the monthly savings? Now, the smaller the loan, of course, the smaller the savings per month. Uh, so that's really the calculation. How much will the lender charge you in closing costs? 
how much will you save per month? If you're going to be there long term, generally I would advise refinancing. Okay, and that's all the time we have for calls. But you were saying now's the time to say, do we need this more insurance? That yes, kind of really. Now's the time of year to really look over your finances. Do you have adequate homeowners insurance? Mm -hmm. um, has your house gone up in value like our caller? Can you get rid of your mortgage mm -hmm. insurance? All, all the things to just look at now that the year's coming to an end. All right, thanks, Brian. Thank you. Happy holidays. You to too. You. Up next on 11 News, Brian Sachs with answers to your mortgage questions. If you have a question, go ahead and call us at 410-481-8844. Welcome back. Joining us now to answer your mortgage questions is Brian Sa Sachs. I'm having a hard time talking this there morning, There you go. Brian. Good morning, and first we're going to talk about, before we take the calls, interest-only loans. We've been hearing yes. a lot about this lately. It's the most popular new product out there, Mindy, and it's, it's, it has some benefits and it has some dangers, just like everything. The benefits are it gives a buyer increased buying power. Right. It also gives you lower monthly payments than you would normally have. You can buy an expensive house and not pay a lot. In well, mortgage. you're not paying any principal, so your payments are a lot lower. Right. How much, can, uh, sorry to interrupt, but how much, give me an idea. Well, you, you could save several hundred dollars okay. a month, which could be the difference between comfort, uh, comfort being comfortable and not comfortable. Okay, the dangers are that some people use this to stretch their payments into homes they really cannot afford. And the other danger is if you're going to be in the home long term, you're really not building any equity. So you got to weigh the pros and cons and see what's right for you. Okay. Thanks for clearing that up. Let's go to the phones. Tiffany, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. My first question was actually about interest only loans. But um, my second question is my option is an 80 20 loan. And the, I think the first loan has a 6% interest, but the second loan has a 13% interest. And is this actually a good option? Uh, it may be a good option. I think the issue really is uh, that an 80-20 loan is allowing you to get into a home with no money down. Home ownership is a very valid endeavor to go after, and if you're lacking funds, the 80-20 is a good program. What you might want to check on, Tiffany, though, is a 100% or a 103% loan where instead of you paying 6% and 13%, you may be able to get the whole loan somewhere in the 75 to 8% range. That may be a better option for you. So ask your lender about 100% financing and 103% financing. All right, let's go to Debbie in Howard County. Hi, Debbie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question about um, refinancing. Yes. A lot of places say that you can refinance with no money out of pocket, but then they tack their fees on and your rate goes up. How do you know what a good fee is? I mean, how much should average should they be charging you? It's a good question. question. It's a great question. And, and you really have to be careful when you're comparing these no-cost uh, refinances. There is no such thing as a no-cost refinance. There is a minimal-cost refinance, and there is a way of uh, taking the cost of the refinance and rolling it into your loan or taking a slightly higher interest rate and having the lender pay your closing costs. Uh, if you're still saving money each month and you're doing it at no out-of-pocket expense, that makes sense to do. The cost for a refinance generally are between $1,500 to $2,000, excluding any points. That would be lender fees and title company fees. The second part of it is you have to fund an escrow account for taxes and insurance, but you should get that back from your current lender uh, two to three weeks after your settlement. So the key is make sure you're saving enough money to warrant the cost of the refinance. Uh, and if you can roll it in and still save money, why not do it? No such thing as a free lunch, right? No, okay. no such thing. <laughs> Time for one more call real quickly. Jarrell in Joppa Town? Um, yes, uh, I'm calling about the uh, bi-weekly uh, bi mortgage. Yes. Um, uh, we uh, took the bi-weekly and we thought that, that the money was being posted bi-weekly, but then it comes to find out that the money uh, is still being posted monthly. But I'm calling, you know, what, I'm, what I want to say is, uh, is that money supposed to be posted bi-weekly? Well, typically, biweekly lenders will make that extra principal payment only one time a year. In lieu of doing it that way as a biweekly mortgage, a biweekly mortgage is going to accomplish one extra mortgage payment paid to your principal, which will reduce the term of your loan and save you thousands in interest. I would tell you that it's something you can do on your own, not have to pay the fees of a biweekly mortgage, as long as you have the discipline to send in that extra payment, put it in a separate check, put on there to be applied towards principal only and clearly place on there your account number. Uh, that way you have a record of this. Um, so I think a bi-weekly mortgage is valid, but it's something you can do on your own. All right, Brian. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too. Let's head over to Lisa in the... 
Up next on 11 News, Brian Sachs with answers to your mortgage questions. And if you have a question, give us a call at 410-481-8844. Stay with us. Brian is next. Welcome back. Joining us now is Brian Sachs to answer your mortgage questions. Thank you so much for coming in, Brian. Thank you. Good morning. And a lot of people think you need a big down payment. Um, you don't for to buy a house, right? You really don't. You know, Maryland, Mindy, is among the highest in the country in terms of closing costs. Mm -hmm. and, and what I hear constantly from people who really want to buy, but they're renting is, we can't afford the down payment, we can't afford the closing costs. Mm -hmm. There's some really exciting products out there. For example, there's a 103% loan. And what that means is, not only will you not have to put any money down, as a lender, you can actually borrow some of your closing costs, wow. and it's still at very attractive interest rates. So with rates as low as they are, there's no reason not to buy a house. All right. Let's go to Angie in Baltimore. Hi, Angie. What's your question for Brian? Yes, good morning. Good morning. I have a question. Um, my mortgage rate is at 6.5%, but yet it seems like every year it's going, my payments are going up every year like two to three dollars right why is that happening it's, it's a great question it's one we get very frequently what's happening to you is this I'm assuming that you have a 30-year fixed rate loan so the principal and interest on your loan is not changing what is changing however is what's in your escrow account and that means your property taxes could be going up slightly which is very normal or your homeowners insurance could be going up a little bit each year and that's why there's an adjustment two or three dollars a month not preferable, but hopefully still very manageable. So your escrow changes. Your right? escrow, your taxes can change, right. your insurance can change, and typically they're very minor. Okay, Darnell in Hamilton. Hi, what's your question? Uh, my question is uh, this. I am at six and three quarters, and I wanted to reduce the uh, mortgage rate, yet I've also filed bankruptcy. What advice do you have for me? Well, in terms of filing bankruptcy, um, how long ago did you have your bankruptcy? Uh, March of this year. March of this year. Typically, when you've had a bankruptcy, there are products out there, but typically they want you to wait one to two years. You have six and three quarters. You're a little bit above the market right now. Uh, my advice to you would be to keep that rate in points. I think it's very attractive given the situation you just put out. All right, Jackie in Woodlawn. Hi, what's your question? Hi. Good morning. I have a question in reference to refinancing. Yes. My current interest rate is at seven, and I wanted to know if it was worth it to refinance. There's a couple ways to determine if it's worth it to refinance. One of the things you need to look at is how much will the refinance cost and how long will you be remaining in the property. I usually like the clients to get uh, their money back. In other words, the money you're going to spend for refinancing should be recouped in monthly savings within 12 to 18 months. Uh, if you want me to run that calculation for you, I'd be more than happy to, and you could reach me at 410 637 seven four eight seven we can certainly run the numbers and tell you very quickly whether it would make sense or not the other thing you need to look at is the term of your loan in other words if you're on a 30-year loan and you've been there already for 10 years you're setting your amortization clock backwards and what i mean by that is uh, in the first year of a mortgage you're paying 99 cents towards interest uh, and 10 cents towards or one cent towards principal as the years go on it gets to be 50 50 so we want to be sensitive not to set that clock all the way back all right we are out of time thank you so much thank for you. Brian for coming in and we're gonna head over to Lisa well up next on 11 news Brian Sachs is here with answers to your mortgage questions. If you have a question please give us a call the number is 410-481-8844 stay with us Brian's next And welcome back. Joining us now to answer your mortgage questions is Brian Sachs. Thanks so much for being here, Brian. Good morning. Before we get to the phones, you wanted to talk a little bit about interest rates. Yes, we finally got another drop in interest rates. Mm -hmm. The roller coaster of 02, 03, looks like it's going to be the roller coaster of 04. So if you're on the fence, now's the time to jump off the fence and either refinance if mm -hmm. it's warranted or buy a home. Great well, time. And before you decide to do that, there are a lot of things to consider. Oh, absolutely. You really should get yourself pre-approved and speak to a lender. Mm -hmm. Get a pre-approval in hand before you even go looking. All right. Let's go to the phones. Okay. We've got a call from Stephanie. Good morning, Stephanie. Your question for Brian? Yes. Hi, Brian. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Um, I just want to know, as far as the property tax that keeps going up and up and up, and your mortgage is going up in the meantime, is there anything you can do or, you know, what? I just want to get that answer, please. Okay. Well, every year you will get an assessment of your property taxes based on the value of the homes in your area and community. 
Uh, however, every time you do get a notice of a tax increase in your property taxes, there is always an appeal process built into the form that you could uh, apply for if, if you really feel it's warranted. Home prices are appreciating, property taxes are going up. It's all part of uh, actually good news that your home is appreciating in value. All right. We've got a call from Yvonne. Good morning, Yvonne. Your question? Uh, I was just wanting to know, Brian, about the time of the, what, what is about the mortgage interest rate going for this time? Well, the really good news right now is that the rates are coming down. Rates right now, uh, we had gone up to about six to six and a quarter percent, and the rates right now are in the five and a half to five and three quarter range. It's a really opportune time. If you have a rate, if you're currently own a home, and your rate is six and a half percent or above, it's time to refinance, maybe even again. All right, we've got a call now from Stacy in Baltimore. Stacy, good morning. Uh, hi. Uh, good morning. I had a luck, luck streak, and I had a house donated to me, which is great, and I have no mortgage or anything. But I tried to get a home equity loan to try to do some home improvement, and I had a bankruptcy in 95, and I have no credit. I've never bought a car. I've never had a credit card, and I don't know where to begin because they turned me down, and I don't – are there any ideas you have? Well, if you'd like to call me at my office, 637-7487, uh, I could put you in touch with some lenders that perhaps can help you. Your bankruptcy in 95 really should not be an issue. Uh, after several years, most lenders will uh, still accept you. However, it is important for you to reestablish credit. Some lenders will be able to look at your utility payments on the home. They'll be able to look at how you pay your car insurance, cell phone, some alternative types of credit that perhaps you may be paying. But I would advise you to go out and at least get one credit card to show that you can reestablish good credit. All right, we get a call from Al from Allison in Baltimore County. Good morning, Allison. Your question? Yes, I have a question about the uh, PMI insurance. Um, we have a condominium that we bought. We've owned it for six years, and we actually refinance. And we're wondering if we still need to pay that. Well, the issue with mortgage insurance depends on the value of the home versus the loan that you have. Mortgage insurance occurs when you have less than twenty percent equity in the home. However, there are products and programs out there that will allow you to structure a loan with as little as even 5% down so that you will not have to pay mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance protects the lender. It does not help you in any way. My advice, find out what your appraised value is versus what you owe on the home. If there is 20% equity, contact the lender and petition to have it removed. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Marilyn. 